Hey everybody, have you ever wondered if you could use an ultrasound machine as a metal detector to get you a nice clear picture of what's going on on the ground, see a ring for a ring instead of a pull tab? Well, if you're looking for information on how ultrasound machines work, this is not the video for you. This is to address a question that comes up over and over again. I've been online uh, in the metal detecting hobby for, fuck, I don't know, 20 years? Uh, yeah, I'm back in the old days of the Tina forums and shit. Somebody always comes up with this question sooner or later. Maybe it's been on your mind too. Who knows? So I want to shoot a video, despite the poor quality, to once and for, once and for all definitively answer the question. Can you use an ultrasound, like a fish finder or, you know, a medical ultrasound machine to find coins in the ground? Uh, spoilers, the answer is no. But I want to shoot a video that explains exactly why it's not possible. So that we can, next time somebody asks this question, I can just go, hey, I've got a link for that. To begin with, let's start with the difference in sound and radio waves. Because a lot of us in the hobby, we're used to VLF metal detectors that uses an electromagnetic wave. So when you create a sound with your voice or, you know, hitting your head against a fucking brick wall, because that's what this question feels like, it pushes the air molecules and it creates a wave through a material. So the wave, the speed of that wave is what we call sound, you know, the speed of sound, whatever. It's no big deal. It's not important to this necessarily. So a... 6.59 kilohertz is a sound you can hear. We can hear sounds between 20 and about 20,000 kilohertz. And what does that mean? Cycles per second. So in one second, the wave will cycle 20 times for 20 hertz. For 20 kilohertz, it'll cycle 20,000 times. Ultrasound is anything above that that we can't hear. Anything above that. And that's a huge fucking range. Radio waves are an electromagnetic field that alternate. We can't hear that. Our ears can't hear electromagnetic fields. So you can have a wave generated by an alternating current that generates a magnetic and electric wave. You know, the right hand rule. We should go into all that. But there's other kinds of stuff. Bats, and bats use sonar all the time, quite effectively. We use sonar in fish finders. We use sonar to, for one submarine to find another submarine. Why won't those things work? we got to talk about frequency. The lower a frequency is, the bigger its wavelength. The distance it travels during one cycle. So, like submarines. Submarine sonar is between 1 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz. Those are huge waves, absolutely massive, uh, maybe a couple hundred meters long, because they're looking for really big fucking things. Boats are big. You know, uh, the fish finders may be higher end on that scale. They might probably go 10, 15 kilohertz. They're looking for stuff a little smaller. Bats, on the other hand, they're, they're, let's see, I got the numbers. All bats combined. 11 kilohertz to about uh, 212 kilohertz. So some bats you can actually hear with your ears because they emit sound. For the ones hunting insects, about 20, what is it, 20 kilohertz to 60 kilohertz. We can't hear that. Bats don't need to look inside the moth. They simply need to know that it is a moth or that it is a wall. So they're looking for smaller objects. So they're using a higher frequency. Boats, remember, they're down at 10. Bats are up around 20 to 60 kilohertz. So they're looking for smaller objects. When you get into medical imaging, uh, the ultrasound machine, the commonly one that we think of uh, being, you know, for the, the, the babies, all that good shit, but it's uh, very useful for a lot of other things. Those are around 2 megahertz to, two, to about 10 megahertz. Because they're looking for very small things. <sighs> Here's where it gets a little more complicated. 
how the whole idea of sonar works is you send out a sound and you listen for the reflections. So why couldn't we send a sound into the ground and listen to reflections? Well, we can. It's called seismic survey. It involves dynamite. I'm guessing your local city park isn't going to allow you to do, do that. And it's looking for something very big, which is the layers of rock that go on for miles. So it, the explosion sends a shock wave, which then reflects off of each layer. So it's looking for something incredibly big. It is a single pulse. That's how you find oil and gas and water and all kinds of good shit. So I want to focus mainly on the medical imaging. It looks great. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could get even a black and white fuzzy image? Is it a ring or is it a full tap? We're going to find out it doesn't quite work that way. So what we're talking about is transducers. And a transducer is a certain type of crystal, usually quartz, that when you squeeze it, put pressure on it, emits a little bit of electricity. But it also works the other way. If you apply electricity to that little crystal, it will change shape, causing a pulse. So you can use these as microphones. And literally that is what an ultrasound machine is. It's a very fancy microphone and, you know, boombox system. So you apply an electric current at a certain frequency to these crystals and they vibrate. Send out a sound wave. Then they shut them off and listen for the reflection. And how the medical imaging works is they have crystals all stacked together. You know that little wand thing? You know, it's shaped about like that. It is rows of crystals. And they activate each one in, in sequence. And that's why you get that sweep. The neat thing is, they can actually sweep that about 20 frames a second. So you can get a near real-time movie of what's going on inside the person. It's very cool stuff. But that works, that works great for people. Not so much for other things in life. So the big problem is sound waves reflect off of everything. And the greater the density difference between the two things, the boundary layer, the stronger the signal. So if you were to transmit from water into air, that boundary layer is so different between left and right, almost all of the signal gets reflected. None of the signal penetrates into the air. So now there's your first problem. You're swinging your transducer along the ground, there's an air gap. Those sound waves will hit the ground, 99% of them will bounce off. That's pretty bad for getting any kind of depth. This is why if you've ever been into, you know, a medical procedure where they've used ultrasound, they goo you. They take a tube of goo. This is to make sure there is no air boundary. You gotta think about what is a person made of? Outside of the bones, basically goo, all about the same density to water. And when the densities are very close, some of that signal will reflect. Most of it will go through. Some of it will reflect off the next boundary. And that's what we're listening for, are those very faint reflections from all of those boundaries. And that's how we compose a picture of what's inside. All right. So if you go from one low density to a high density, it reflects. So if you're medical imaging and you scan a bone, it's going to be pure white because its density is so much different than the goo around it, you know, your goo. If you hit an air pocket, same deal. The density between air and goo is so great that air and bone look identical in a medical scan. You can't tell the difference. So, we haven't even got to the best part yet. <laughs> what is a medical scan actually looking at? You see these beautiful pictures. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could tell the difference between a ring and a pull tab? What is the medical scan looking at? All those crystals are pointed down.
that image is a slice straight down. I wish I had a coin handy to show you. I should have been better prepared. This is a really low quality video. However, here. So here's my tablet buried in the ground. If I take a section through this, that is all that will appear on your screen. Not that. I would have to take a section this way. My, my microphones would have to be inside the ground shooting sideways in order to get that as a picture. Shooting down, all you're going to see is one straight line. Not good. Really not good. But it gets worse. Let's say you wanted to progressively scan, right? So you would take, there would be nothing here, then line, 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 line. And you would see an object. Well, now you have to process in 3D. How fast is that transducer moving? And by the way, sound reflects off of everything. So if there's a rock, another object, this shape is all you would see in your display. Now you're fucked. You can no longer decide if that's a tablet or not. Let's not forget the ground itself, the dirt, lots of little air pockets in there. So you would have nothing but static field and maybe a little faint outline of stacked objects. It will bounce off of metal, glass, plastic, rubber, you name it. Everything in the ground would reflect. And it would just be this static nonsense of bullshit. So yeah, the answer is absolutely, positively, no. What else do we have here? Well, that's that. All right. It will not work. The sound will bounce around inside the ground and give you nothing but absolute fucking noise after you've built a very expensive piece of equipment and somehow figured out how to track it across the ground so that you could build your images. I hope this comes a little bit closer to answering the question, can we use sonar? No, we can't. It would be great if we could get nice, clean images. But you got to think, the ground is a 3D space. We tend to think of it as, as we sweep across, uh, it all being compressed and just the pieces we want showing up. But it is, in fact, a 3D space. So if you want a picture of the, what's in the ground, that's going to be more complicated than you think because it's looking down through a box full of junk. And all you can see is the outline of all of that junk in one layer. Your screen is that one layer. It's not as easy as you think to 3D image the ground or to even take a picture. Is it a ring or is it a pull tab? For that, you need to go and do radio waves. Radio waves interact with metal differently than it interacts with rocks. That's why we can detect metal and skip all of the other fun things in the toy box of the 3D space that is buried beneath your feet. Sound? Not going to cut it. I don't know. Did that answer the question? I fucking hope so. Because I have like three fucking pages of notes here. And I think I only got through half of them. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Like it matters. I'll see you guys later.